Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a 76-year-old female who came in with neurologic symptoms. Let's see what we have. Going from the top down. Get an idea whether you see something abnormal or not. And start thinking about what you might say about it. Okay, this is a little difficult. This is a tough one. I'll give you a hint. The patient has left-sided weakness. So that should at least tell you what side of the brain the abnormality will be on. Or at least probably is on. Okay. Well, here's the finding. If you look closely, you'll see that you have good differentiation, a nice clean margin distinguishing the gray matter, the cortex, from the white matter, which are the myelin fibers in the hemispheres. So you have a nice sharp margin here. You can, even though it's not always real clear, here you can see a little thin ribbon of cortex and you have this lower attenuation underneath it. And for better or worse, that low attenuation white matter does get lower in attenuation to varying extents with age. So this looks about the way it should. Now if you look over here, what can you say? Well, it overall has a darker appearance. Darker, of course, being a lower attenuation. Bright, like bone, being a very high attenuation. And so this is overall a lower attenuation. How about that gray-white matter differentiation? And again, it's gray-white matter. Gray-white matter differentiation, which you see pretty well here. And here it's really quite indistinct. Now when you get back here, it seems like you have it. But here it's kind of ill-defined and you can't really see it much at all around here. Okay, so this is a stroke. What territory is involved? Well, you know you have the anterior cerebral artery supplying this area and the top of the brain. And you have the right middle cerebral artery territory here and the posterior cerebral artery territory here, more or less. You'll see it is a little different in its distribution at different levels of the brain. So this looks like a right middle cerebral artery distribution infarct. Now, one question you have to ask yourself is, is there hemorrhage? Anytime you have an infarct, you want to always know whether there's associated hemorrhage. There is associated hemorrhage in infarcts fairly commonly, and that will change the kind of therapy that will be done. So, let's see, here we go. So look here, is there any hemorrhage? No, there's not, there's not. This. Here we go. There's no hemorrhage. Okay, how about mass effect? That's very important. Now, initially, in the first hour or so, there probably won't be any mass effect. But with time, the mass effect can get very severe. And so, one thing we look for is midline shift. That is a significant event when the midline is shifted. And right here, just looking at it, eyeballing it, it doesn't look like there's much, if any. There may be a millimeter or two when you look at this compared to a line that would draw there. But look over here. This is the region of the sylvian fissure. Of course, you don't quite see it right because the sylvian fissure is horizontally oriented, but you can see that there are folds in the cortex here. You can see these fissures or sulci, actually they'd call, be called cortical sulci, that are the folds between areas of cerebral cortex. And you don't really have that much here. You have something here, and that's the actual sylvian fissure. But the smaller folds near that you don't see. And if you go up higher, you see, well, you've got quite a few here, and you've lost most of them here. That's mass effect. That means these the folds here that are normal on this side have become edematous, so they're like kind of fingers, but they, they extend and 
thicken and that effaces or causes loss of this fluid CSF filled sulcus. Sulcus is the singular, sulci is the plural. So here you have a right middle cerebral artery territory infarct and it looks kind of low attenuation back here. It may be encroaching on the posterior cerebral artery territory and that may be just an anatomic variant in this patient or it may be that the the posterior cerebral artery is also compromised. Okay, so now let's see what we have. What is the cause? Well, if you look here, here's the basilar artery coming up there. And if you follow that down low enough, you usually can see that there are two vertebral arteries contributing to it. Barely. One, two. You see those there. Just barely make those out. And let's see. Go down further. Here we go. Right vertebral artery, left vertebral artery. Now that's the kind of anatomy that is basic when you look at a diagram and you see that the two vertebral arteries go up to a basilar artery and from there branches. But to be able to recognize what you're looking at here instead of just a few little structures and who knows what. So this is the medulla and these are the cerebellar tonsils. They're actually called cerebellar tonsils. So this is the medulla, cerebellar tonsils, the very posterior most aspect and inferior and posterior most aspect of the cerebellum. And these are the vertebral arteries. How do I know? Because they look like it? No. They don't look like really anything. It's because of the anatomic relationship. Here, a little bit lower, you can see they're coming in from the side. So these are the two vertebral arteries. And then if we go lower still, we lose them because they're off in these areas here. So vertebral arteries, right and left vertebral artery, joining here, merging in front of the medulla or the brain stem is the large general term and medulla is that specific part. And let's see if we see the basilar artery again coming back up. All right, so that's the basilar artery. It often gets very tortuous, especially in patients with hypertension. So that's the basilar artery. It looks pretty good. Take a look over here. You see an asymmetry. This is the right middle cerebral artery. It is dense. It is really dense. And the term we use for this sign is, you wouldn't believe it, we call it the dense middle cerebral artery sign or the dense MCA sign. So this is dense because it has clot in it. And clot, of course, is not just watery serum or plasma of the blood with blood cells and platelets and stuff like that, but it is, it is clotted. There's a thrombosis process, of course, and that means that there are more solids in it and a blood clot is still gelatinous, but it's not liquid. So this side has watery, normal blood that maybe has a, a, a hematocrit of 50, 40. So the rest is fluid. And here it's all kind of solid, even if gelatinous. So it's higher attenuation, and that's why this is so high in attenuation or dense. Uh, the basilar artery is a little bit more difficult to read into because it's smaller and so there's more of a high attenuation that's just related to the wall of the artery. So this actually looks a little suspicious to me for maybe having a clot in it and that could be of course the cause of the posterior cerebral artery issue if indeed this is a real finding and I think there's something going on there. Not a hundred percent certain. But the main point then is that you've seen now some of the early signs of an infarct. Sulcal effacement, that means loss of the little spaces that you normally see between the cortical folds, they're lost here. And the, only the biggest one, the actual sylvian fissure, which is here, is not fully effaced. The other is 
overall low attenuation and that can be accentuated with windowing on a computer at, at teleradiology or a PAX setting. Okay, and here of course we have the pineal gland which is partially calcified which is often the case. This little space here is the tentorial incisura because this is where the two uh, tentoria, the left and right tentorium, separates the intracranial portion of the brain, meaning the cerebral hemispheres, from the posterior fossa. So this is posterior fossa with brain stem and cerebellum. And as you go up, you see that the tentorium moves in more and more centrally, and I'll go back down. You can hardly see it, but what you're seeing is not the tent itself, but you're seeing the transition between cerebral soft tissue, the brain tissue of the cerebral hemispheres, above the tentorium, and this is the cerebellum below it. But because the tentorium is kind of sloped on both sides, you see both structures at the same time. Well, that's it for this case. More soon.